So uh, precariousness, precarity, the precariat, these are obviously all terms that we're very familiar with. But what do we actually understand about the lived experience of precarity? You know, there's been a lot of research over a long period of time which tells us that there's been a proliferation of precariousness. But what that research also tells us is that we have very distinct reactions to that precariousness. That we're angry, ang angry uh, we experience alienation, anxiety and anomaly. What my research does is try to get more into the detail of that and look at the way in which different people think and feel about the precarious spaces they inhabit. So what did I do? I conducted in-depth qualitative interviews with 25 people trapped within the low pay, no pay cycle, living in a highly economically and socially polarised part of Kent, so specifically Sittingbourne and the Elder Sheppey. And what I found was, although the narratives which these people constructed around their work in lies absolutely reflected the findings of other studies on the low pay, no pay cycle, and there were some examples of anger, alienation, anxiety and anomie, there was a lot of variation within that. That variation, in part, was defined by people's transitions into the low pay, no pay cycle. So there's very clear, distinct ways in which people ended up in this type of scenario. So these would be people that would be perpetually in and out of work, work worth for cycling. These would be people that would be uh, activated from certain benefits, usually for a work capabilities assessment. And these are people that have went in there through the shock of redundancy. These characterise the ways in which they constructed their narratives and therefore understood and expressed their sort of level of precarity. Above that, there was also a lot of variation. A lot of people spoke about their past experiences and their imagined futures, and they brought in issues to do with their work and sort of their home life. People included issues to do with their age, their gender, their dependencies, their dependence, their capabilities, and these all intersected in very sort of distinct ways. Um, so what I tend to find quite often, people's reactions to their precarity was dependent on their susceptibility to male breadwinner models, their sense of deservingness as they moved in and out of the welfare benefit system, and also their sort of senses of lost and gained identity as they travelled through and went into different sort of workplaces and that kind of thing. So, you know, it's all a bit complex. You can sort of think, what's the point? It depends on the individual. You know, the point of my research, it not only provides a counter to the likes of Andrew Dunn, who suggests research on the low pay, no pay cycle doesn't really acknowledge social diversity, it also casts some doubt on the generalisations made by a lot of macro accounts of precarity, specifically Guy Stans, but obviously there's a, long, there's a long context there. What my research tries to do is better understand some of the details within that to find ways in which we can best support people trapped on the margins of society. In part, a lot of my research looks at ways in which we can actually provide personalised support through work to welfare schemes in a much more localised way. But obviously, there's a very important context as to, you know, do we actually want to look at people's sense of well-being within this employment context scenario? Mm. I think that's it. <laughs>